In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Pelican 1510 case as a pipe case. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like the kind of videos I'm making here, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, sharing this with any pipers in your life, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. Anyways, on with the video. Transporting our pipes safely is one of the things every piper has to get accomplished, and there's a lot of various cases on the market, but my favorite by far has to be the Pelican 1510. Like any case, it's not completely perfect. There's pros and cons with all of these things, but I think for the money and for the protection, you're not gonna get better than the Pelican 1510. Let's go into some of the features. One of the primary benefits of the Pelican 1510 is exactly how durable these cases are. I've owned this case for, whew, I don't know, a decade? Nine years, this one I've owned for at least seven, and they're in great shape. They even have their original wheels. And yes, I said wheels. As you may be able to see here, there are wheels right here, this thing, and there is a pull-out handle, which I'm kind of demonstrating. Let's move this particular stuff right here. Boom, you can see right here, it's got a pull-out handle and a little clip that will make it retract back inside. The case itself has two handles. It's got a large handle that's quite comfortable to carry like a suitcase, and it's also got a trolley-style handle on top. Both are very rugged. Both have held up great over the years. With this case, you can you can step on it. You can I, supposedly there's guys that have rolled like a, a dump truck over it. I don't know if I would trust it quite that far, but you're just not going to find more protection in a pipe case than this particular case. It is far more durable than any sort of cloth sided case. Also, in the case itself, there are no zippers on the exterior to fail that can be a problem with a lot of other cases. It's available in a ton of colors. I got a tan here with some green handles, and here I have a black with brown handles. I actually took the brown handles off of this one and swapped out the green ones with another friend. They're just held in by little pins. So you can kind of customize it if you got two friends that uh, have different color ones, or nowadays you can buy them in a ton of different colors. I've seen these things in blue and orange and yellow. Um, so there's a ton of color options, which can be great. Another thing that's super cool is we're going to do this right now let's go ahead and make sure this is closed all the way as you can see here and you can't even see me these things stack exceedingly well they're designed to be stacked on top of one another you can see all the detail on the bottom there interfaces very well with what we see on the top of the case here also it takes stickers really well yeah, I know it's kind of silly, but it's nice to be able to have some stickers on your case if that's your thing. Now, let's get inside this case and check out what's really going on. All right, so it's got dual action latches here, and it pulls just straight up. This has the 1519 insert, which is lovely. It allows you to put all of your various pipe supplies. I'll do another video on exactly what I carry in my pipe case uh, in the future. But needless to say, it's got five separate pockets able to hold just about anything you might think about. And then the case itself right here. Now you can see, I actually like to use a large auto drying towel to kind of wrap the pipes in. I'm gonna go ahead and just put that over the front. And here you go. Now with the Pelican case, you're gonna have to break the pipes apart slightly more than the regular case because the dimensions are that of a proper carry-on for airlines, which is 22, 14 by nine. That means you can't keep even your tenor drones together. I find this isn't that big of a deal, and I don't have to take the bottom of the stocks out. So you can see the stocks are still attached to the bag. This is my goatskin bag right here, so having a non-synthetic bag is not a problem for fitting in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the main part of the pipes over here. And then I just lay the towel over the bottom, and then we can kind of take a look inside the case right here here we go we got our blow i got my blow pipes i happen to have two with two different mouthpieces i got my channers right here they all fit great i got a couple of brushes in here you got to keep your pipes clean and this is one of two different layouts we're going to be looking at the pipes in this case as well for a different layout and there will be pdfs below of uh, a diagram of exactly how you can use this pick and pluck foam that you're looking at right here. This foam is great. It lets you kind of poke out the exact 
dimensions you may want for your pipes when they're in this case. As you can see, I have the base drone taken apart and both tenors right there. You can also see I actually even have my stoppers kind of right along the top. I kind of actually just pulled out like half of a square right here. And it's great to just keep my corks in there and they tend to stay in there just fine. Take the base out, put it together, and boom, I have my tops ready to attach straight to my pipes over here. Now let's keep looking at this case. Now for demonstration purposes more than anything, I actually laid a thin orange towel underneath the foam. Um, it's nice to be able to see into the case that way, though it's not required. It does have and comes with a piece of foam on the bottom that protects anything. So it's not just rusting against hard plastic. But here, it really helps you see the cutouts. So we have the base top, base middle, which I have connected a little channel for the cords here. There's the middle tenor, and over there on the far end is the outer tenor. They're kind of flipped to each other, but it ends up fitting in here great. And this pick and pluck foam, nice and soft, does a great job of protecting everything. And once the drones are in here, I lay the auto drawing towel on top to protect them. Then you can lay everything else back inside, including the pipes, wrap it back up around the top of the whole thing. And then the top of the auto drying towel here is gonna protect any possible pokey things here from damaging the pipes themselves. All right, I'm gonna bring you in on a slightly different angle here. I'll let you look at the pick and pluck foam inside the case itself right here. Oh, a little bit of my finger. Here you can see where I have it slightly pulled out right there. I actually have you know, a bit of little red foam down there. It doesn't matter, but I have that half pulled out and then the stopper for the drones fits very nicely. Little damage there from uh, the cat actually kind of getting into the case one time and trying to make it a home. And here you can see the insert better. Zippered pockets. So there are some zippers involved if you get the insert. If you don't get the insert, that's fine. It comes with a piece of corrugated foam on the top here. So it would still be soft and protected, but I really like having this much storage. It's just about everything you might need. All right, over here we can see the handle and it also has room for a nameplate, which is pretty nice to be able to, to get that customized to however you want it with whatever information you might want to have. And over here, these are pretty important. Let's go ahead and close this down. So we have the latches here, which are nice and strong and aren't readily openable. But that being said, there's no button. So one of the cons, if I had one, is that the without a button, these could actually just get pulled open during transport. And if that happened and you had to check this bag, well, that's bad. So what I do is I have a TSA locker too. And sometimes these make it home, sometimes they don't, but they can go a long way to helping make sure that your pipes are secure in here. And just like that, if this opens, that TSA lock is gonna keep it from coming open the rest of the way. Um, I have included a note just on top saying, please replace the TSA lock if you need to remove that. And I'll often put one on it and I'll have a spare TSA lock inside if I have to, because you never know when you just might have to check um, your particular bag. All right, so now we have it in the rolling configuration here with the handle extended. And it's pretty easy to do. You can see there's a latch right there. You just open that up and with two hands, once you pull it back, it latches in place so you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. It works really, really well. With the roller handle extended, you can see it makes a fairly decent pipe stand. It's not necessarily the absolute most secure pipe stand, but it sure beats laying it down on concrete if that's your only option. And if it is, again, that auto drying towel that we had there can go a long way to helping that. But that works pretty well. And you can see, they're not really wanting to go anywhere even when I shake the case. So that's kind of a nice little feature, not have to carry something separate to hold your pipes up with. All right, let's go ahead and take a look in this case here. I have my other set of pipes. I have the Robbies in here. And again, you can see I have all of my supplies. We'll go over that in a future video. And we're gonna undo the, the top. And you can see I have the, the bag and drone bottoms all attached. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, and then we just take this towel away and then we look inside the case and we can see here, everything's fitting pretty well. Now this is a very different layout. Let's go ahead and take the chanters 
and blowpipe and brushes out. And we can see a very different layout for the drones here than the other one. Again, there will be PDF downloads in the description below with kind of templates on how you could customize your pick and pluck foam. So that pick and pluck foam, if you see here, see that stuff, it'll just tear away fairly readily. The foam it comes with is actually quite thick, however, and I like to actually kind of fillet it in half. Let's take a look here at the other half of this very piece of foam right there. So you can see here a completely un poked out version, but the pick and pluck foam right there. So again, there'll be templates. And here you can see how it looks after I've cut it. And to cut it, all I use is, just put it right there, pull it back. Yeah, that's like an electric turkey carving knife. I actually have one of these I have dedicated to cutting this foam at this point. Um, and it's these blades are starting to get a little dull. I've probably cut three dozen of these uh, foam things in half over the years. But I just, I mark it with a Sharpie around the outside and then turn it on and just run it carefully. Yeah, it might take a time or two to get, and you can see it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember this side can be the side that goes down below so you get the nice smooth top and don't have to worry about any of the, the ugly bits like that showing in your case. So again, there's another layout and there's just another shot of some of the supplies. We'll go over that in a future video. Real quick guys, this is a carry-on case. It is meant to be taken on board the plane. It is 14 by nine by 22. Those are the exact dimensions that they allow. But more importantly, the TSA or whatever agency you're dealing with, they've seen a lot of these. These things are very common. Now that you're aware of what it is, next time you're at an airport, you're going to almost certainly see several of these. And that matters. It matters because when they see one of these things, they're not asking you to put it in the cage. It'll fit fine, but they're not, I've never been asked. I've been flying with these things dozens and dozens of times, and I've never been asked to see if it fits. Now they might wanna see what's inside because these are military style cases and people often carry things that are not bagpipes or the TSA might not know what a bagpipe is. So, but they're easy to travel with. People know what they are, um, yeah. Let me list what I feel the cons of this particular case are. I think the single biggest con is this dual latch system that doesn't have some sort of button that you have to press in. That means that you could fly and have this open. This particular case I was traveling with once and one of the two latches was actually undone. I saw it coming, I had to check it. No choice, had to check it. I trusted the protection, but I hadn't really thought about it. I had to check it and that latch was undone, this latch wasn't. If both latches had come undone, there's nothing to keep it closed. For that, I recommend the TSA security lock. But the latches not having a button release, that's, that's a con. It's not one that makes me not wanna use it, just be aware and that you're gonna wanna perhaps do something to secure at these lock points if you feel you have to check this for some reason. Really, the only other con to this particular case is the fact that you have to break the pipes down as far as you do but I don't really view that as much of a con in my opinion. It only takes a few seconds to get them together and you just kind of get used to it. When this is your pipe case, you get used to it pretty quickly. So it's really not a big deal. But for those that like keeping their pipes mainly put together and only taking their base off and twisting it, putting it in a case, you're gonna notice it's gonna take you a split second longer to put your pipes together. And as silly as it is, I think one of the final pros is if you show up at an event with this case or even a bagpipe workshop or something similar. I've had me and members of my pipe band roll into winter storm with these and it kind of stops traffic a little bit. Um, they're getting more common, which I think is fantastic. But uh, several years ago, when probably four of us uh, came in and we had these cases, we got a lot of questions. We got a lot of wide eyes and we got, a. Uh, it was just great. It was very positive. People wanted to see what it was all about. So I think it presents a really professional look, especially if you didn't have it all covered in stickers if you wanted to look particularly professional. I like having a bit of fun with my case, so I have all sorts of other stickers on it. But you know, you do you, but they're very professional cases. And the other pro has to be that it is a Pelican. It's one of the most respected cases on the market. People put 
some of the most valuable belongings in the universe in these cases, and they know that Pelican is going to protect them. I am not um, being in any way endorsed or sponsored by Pelican. I bought all these cases myself. I have no discount or anything else. I just know that I can trust my pipes, and I have some fantastic pipes. I got the first set of Robbie's ever made, and I have uh, a set of Henderson Heritage pipes. I absolutely adore my instruments, and I want to make sure that I am protecting them the best I can, and that when I travel with them, that I'm doing what I need to to protect them for the long term. Well, all right, guys, I think that about wraps us up right here. So again, I'm going to have uh, PDFs down below of the templates I've used for the pick and pluck foam in these if you wanted to give it a shot. If it doesn't work the first time, you have the other half of the foam to try with and it comes with two of those big blocks of foam. So don't worry if the first time you try to get it all plucked out, it doesn't work well, or if you go to cut it in half and it's a little topsy-turvy, you have an entire another piece of foam to work with and you can buy that foam separately as well if you need to. Um, the foam itself, you saw the foam in both these cases. In both cases, it's the original foam these came with, and they're many, many years old now, and they've held up great, even with my cat clawing into a little bit of the foam in, thank goodness, an empty pipe case. Um, it was just a little bit of surface damage. The foam's holding up really well, so I don't have any complaints about that. It's not the absolute most attractive inside of a case, but I'm not trying to show off the inside of my case. I'm trying to protect my bagpipes. All right, guys. Well, my name is Matt Willis, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, think about sharing it with uh, somebody, another piper in your life. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment below with your thoughts on the Pelican cases or what case you think is the best case on the market to use to protect your bagpipes. If you're enjoying these videos, you might want to consider heading over to my Patreon, and there'll be a link in the description below and on screen right now. It's a small monthly donation that goes an awfully long way to helping me uh, continue to make video content like this for bagpipers all over the planet. I think that's everything I have to say about these uh, Pelican 1510 cases. So I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.